What's the long-term impact of a ketogenic diet on the microbiome? Uh, another question related is how to maintain proper gut motility, microbiome di diversity on a ketogenic diet. Um, yeah, I'm just coming off of doing a series of lectures on the GI system to the med students or future med students. So, uh, and none of this stuff is in there. Actually, the microbiome stuff is starting to work its way into medical uh, student instruction, which is exciting. So I'm starting to work some of this stuff in, uh, like leaky gut and SIBO and IBS. Um, so when it comes to the ketogenic diet, so s some people respond dramatically well to a carnivore diet, which actually has, you know, no fiber, no quote unquote fuel for your intestinal bacteria in regards to soluble fiber, right? We know that when you eat soluble fiber, you break that down to short chain fatty acids, and then the colonocytes uh, use that for fuel. And also the short chain fatty acids like butyrate, not only uh, are fuel for the colonocytes, but they enter circulation. Uh, they are butyrates an epigenetic regulator. It's a histone deacetylase inhibitor and has really important functions. So, you know, that, that, the, the microbiome, which is making uh, these short chain fatty acids from fiber, uh, also creates the microbiome. Uh, the diversity of that is important, and and for making uh, acetate and propionate and butyrate, and that diversity of these short chain fatty acids are, are really important. Uh, I'm of the belief that. For me personally, getting some amount of fiber is important. And I know some people respond very well clinically to a diet that's completely devoid of carbohydrates. And they may have, you know, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO. And I've communicated with quite a people, quite a few people who completely go on a plant-free, carbohydrate-free keto carnivore diet or whatever you want to call it, and it it restores their health. To the point where I know, you know, something's going on here. Um, so, but generally, I don't think it's a good idea to completely eliminate fiber all the time. And I think that having some amount of fiber in the diet promotes microbiome diversity. You can add fermented foods. So, I guess, you know, you don't even have to get plants per se. You could, you know, fermented foods like sour cream with cultures or yogurt with certain cultures can be those probiotic foods. But I do think some prebiotic fiber is, is really important long-term for gut motility, microbiome diversity, and, uh, and just for the overall microbiome.